tell you something you already know. The world ain't all sunshine and rainbows. It's a very mean and nasty place, and I don't care how tough you are, it will beat you to your knees and keep you there permanently if you let it. Welcome to Life Coaching Comedians. Here, there's no client confidentiality because it's funny. I'm your life coach, Lexis Chardet, and today I have a new comedian joining us, Winston A. Marshall. Winston has been doing comedy since 2011. You have seen him on epic rap battles of history and Revolt Black Tree TV. Recently, you may have seen him on the 23andMe commercial as well as Nickelodeon's movie, Bixler High Private Eye. And check out for him for a secret role on a new Disney movie. You know how private Disney is. I am so excited to have Winston in as my guest today. Please sit tight while I get him on the line. <laughs> Abby, she's so excited. <laughs> Hello. Well, hello, Winston. How are you doing? I am doing well. Your hair has grown. Yeah. Oh, wow. I realize I haven't done uh, any sort of, I haven't seen you or done a session in a long time, so. It has been a while. I feel like you are avoiding me. Please don't psychoanalyze me before we've even started. I feel very vulnerable right now. (laughs) You know, I'm your friend, and I am a mirror, so I am a pure reflection of you. Do not fight yourself. (laughs) Oh, it's going to be one of those sessions, isn't it? (laughs) So tell me, what's been going on in your life? Uh, Not a whole lot right now. I mean, I just finished uh, working on uh, a show last month, and right now I'm just uh, enjoying Black History Month. Yes. Just, uh, yeah. Yeah. Just uh, relishing exactly. You know, Black Power, I got wear my, figured it'd be appropriate to wear my Africa shirt, uh, you know, but uh, just absolutely nothing. Just, just hustling and surviving. That's what I'm doing right now. So tell me, what is it that you would like to talk about today? Uh, I'm an open book, Doc. I mean, you're the one that always puts me on the right path. So, you know, whatever you got for me, I mean, I, I'm really, uh, trying to take both my career and my relationship to the next level. So whatever you got for me, go for it. Do not call me Doc. I do not want a oh. legal suit on my hands. Oh, I'm, okay. I'm your coach and your friend. Okay. All right, coach. <laughs> Then, then, uh, but what's the play? Tell me what the play is, Coach. How do I, how do I go forward with this? Okay, so we have a couple things that we can do here, Winston. Um, I kind of already asked you what you want to talk about, but you tend to be avoiding the subject, which is kind of um, predictable of you. So, um, what I'll do is I have, you know, our main topics that we try to discuss in a hat here, and I'm just gonna pick one. And we'll talk okay. about it. How does that feel? It's sounds a little, sounds fine by me. It's a little non-invasive, right? Yeah. Okay, okay. So, tell me when to stop. Stop. All right. Ooh. We have attitude. Mm. So tell me, how has your attitude been lately? Uh, it's been better. I feel like I'm going through a period right now where I am not at my most, uh, what's, what's the term? With cash, I guess. 
I'm a little strapped for it right now. So my, my whole demeanor has shifted a little bit just because the more you have to stress out about stuff like that, it kind of trickles down. Um, but you know, I find a lot of physical activity is good to let out any potential like aggression that I've had. Amen. As a amen. I am so for that. So have you been going to the gym, you know, beefing it up a little bit, uh, puffing up the chest, uh, lifting some weights, doing some kava bra. I mean, what is your, what is your thing? Well, I don't want to go around looking like Anthony Anderson after he lost all that weight with the big head and the little body. So instead, I've been, uh, I, yeah, you know, uh, I play, I play dodgeball. So it's, I've been playing a lot, like some four or five times a week now. Wow, that's pretty aggressive. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's nothing, nothing allows you to really get out any frustration you have, like throwing rubber balls at people as hard as you possibly can. And I have to say, there is nothing more humbling than a ball to the face. I'm sure that's the case, Doc. <laughs> I'm sure it is. I mean, uh, you know, strictly, strictly rubber balls over here. And like, Lord knows, like I almost. Like, I got hit so hard it knocked my contacts out, so I was, like, blind temporarily and whatnot. So, yeah, it will definitely humble you quickly. Uh, but, you know, it's it's one of those things where, like, there's a lot of – there's a lot of cardio work. There's a lot of, like – it's funny seeing people from different sports backgrounds play. You've got football players, baseball players, all that kind of stuff, like, putting it all together. And so – it's very in, even dancers like that's the biggest one. The dancers are some of the best dodgers by far because they can move their bodies in ways you're not. Most people are not used to. So it's a very humbling sport for sure. So channeling back to your attitude, mm. which emotion would you best describe your attitude right now? Which emotion would I best describe it? Yes. Mm, let's see. I would have to say probably frustrated. Frustrated. Um, okay. And that's yeah. coming from your finances. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, um, I mean, this is such a very common subject amongst comedians is the finances. Seems like everyone is a broke joke or has a broken heart. And um, I, I understand. Um, so let's talk a little bit about, okay, do you, I'm going to give you a choice here. Do you want to okay. talk about your finances so to speak, and how we can make that better and tackle that? Or would you rather talk about your attitude and how to improve your attitude? Me personally, I think speaking about the attitude, everything else follows once you perfect that. Well, you're the doc. Well, I'm not supposed to call you doc. You're the coach. So I would say if that's, if you feel like that is the best way for me to write the ship, so take I will take you. You know you're the expert. Okay. okay. I'm just here to try and absorb what you're giving to me. So okay. I appreciate that. I appreciate your trust, and I will guide you the best I can. Okay, so let's start with first thing in the morning um, when you're in this frustrated attitude, so to speak. What is your mindset? What is your first thought as you're getting? out of the bed uh damn my black ass is gonna have to get out of bed eventually typically i'll i will wake up and i will stay in bed and watch tv for like two hours before i actually do anything and what is it that you watch anything i might have missed from the night before so you know if whatever the the shows that are on so i'm i'm a big fan of uh all of the, the Arrowverse shows on the CW or like um, I've been watching The Mad Singer. I don't know why. It's not a particularly good show, but I can't not watch it. Uh, and so I, just any of that stuff, I'll just throw that on and just kind of blow through it. And after about an hour or two, once I've kind of settled, I'll get up and uh, start doing things. 
Okay, so what is it about these particular shows that you like, or what emotion do these shows give you? You know, I, I like them just because it's nice to have the, the three storylines, but it, ironically, the shows actually are having a tendency to upset me a little more because... I'm like right on the precipice to being in a lot of them. And so to watch them and be like, fuck, I'm still not there yet is annoying to say the least. Um, but there's a level of you have to, because like I'll be auditioning for a lot of these shows and whatnot. Like you have to stay up to date with things because you have to know how the show works. You have to know like what kind of stuff is going on in the, the through lines and stuff like that. Like I watched all of, um, uh, I had to, I, I can't say the name because of the NDA sign, but I watched all of it in the a Netflix original show in order to audition for their uh, second season of it. Mm-hmm. Um, but like the crappy thing about that is you genuinely have to give up 10 hours of your life in order to do that. And then you don't necessarily guarantee that you're going to turn around and get stuff like that. So that kind of stuff can affect my attitude just because I feel like I'll be throwing a massive amount of resources emotionally or otherwise into what feels like a void. So when you're watching these shows, do you ever visualize yourself on them rather than thinking about how you're not on them? Uh, yeah, and the, but typically it ends up being in the form of seeing a character and being like, oh, I could have played that type scenario a lot of the time, if that makes sense. Okay, so my next question is, uh, when you wake up in the morning, are you waking up from an alarm, or are you just waking up when life allows you to wake up? Uh, just uh, occasionally, if there's something that's pressing in the morning, I will set an alarm, but otherwise I'm typically just waking up, uh, cause the earliest I ever have to do anything on most days is about 10. So I just kind of allow myself to wake up. And when are you doing your dodgeball activities? Uh, the earliest is 7 PM, uh, and then the latest it would go until is until about ten. Okay. So it sounds to me like what you're in need of is a solid morning routine. Hmm. What do you think about that? Not a bad idea. So do you like exercise enough to wake up at a certain hour? every morning and get some cardio or a little iron pumping action first thing to get you in the right mindset? (laughs) In theory, yeah, but I know I'm not like a huge morning person, so I'm I'm willing to try it because what you've told me before that the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results, so... I am aware of that. So I'm if if that's what you're suggesting I try, I mean, what what would you recommend as far as the type of activity that I should be doing first thing in the morning? Well, the great thing is that you're already active and you have your dodgeball um activity, which sounds to me that it's also a social activity, am I right? Yes. Okay. So that's great. That's great to have an active social thing to do. But it sounds like you need some Winston time. And, um, you know, getting up first thing in the morning. I mean, it doesn't have to be the butt crack of dawn. But when you get up in the morning and you're making time for you, I mean, it's great that you're watching the shows that you want to be on. I don't think that you should stop doing that. Um, I definitely think that helps with some visualization, but I think the first thing that you should be doing in the morning is building up your confidence. And I think the best way to build up your confidence is letting yourself die a little, you know, like putting yourself Mm. in that position where you're like, Oh, I think I 
I don't know if I can do this shit. But then you do it, you know? Mm. And Mm -hmm. there's other testosterone around you. And, uh, you know, just Mm. die a little bit in the morning. Huh. So wake up, kill myself, and then go about my life is what you're telling me. Exactly. And I know it it sounds a little crazy, but... Most successful people in the world, their key to their success is discipline and Mm. mental strength. And in my life as an athlete, as a nerd, as um, a musician, I mean, I've lived so many lives. You might as well call me a cat, Winston, but... Mm. Um, the things that have made me the most strong mentally is my physical attributes. Um, Mm. playing basketball, running track, playing lacrosse, being a swimmer, dying, holding my breath underwater for longer than I wanted to because my coach was just holding me under there, practically trying to kill me. I died a little bit, you know, and then when I came mm. back up and caught that breath, I was like, wow, I was capable of doing something that I didn't think I was because someone else thought I could. And so mm. you have to be able to push yourself a little bit. So I think, Winston, if you give yourself some purpose in the morning, you get up, you know, take on something new. You can take on a new sport. Maybe... A little um, Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Get choked out a little bit. Or do something simple like cardio or lift some weights or whatever. Find find what works for you. Or maybe there's some sort of intensive training that you can do to get better at dodgeball. But do that first thing in the morning because you know what it does? Is it clears your mind. Mm. And then when you surprise yourself with a physical activity that you can do... It starts to build up your confidence in other things. So the next thing you know is you'll be watching these shows. And rather than being upset that you're not in them, you'll be like, I could have did that shit better. Huh. Huh. And, then, and then maybe, and then maybe you can start writing. You write, right? Yeah. So, so maybe you can start writing you know, some um, ghost episodes of these TV shows, right? You write, you write an episode and um, a, a mock episode or a spec episode and you place yourself in that and how you want to play that role. And you work on that episode. Maybe you write two, maybe you write three. But because you're, you're literally putting yourself mentally, visualizing yourself in that role, right? And then... It'll eventually come to reality. Who knows? Maybe you'll even get the opportunity to share that script, right? Mm -hmm. And that can all stem from you being a beast first thing in the morning. Huh. So tell me, tell me what you're thinking. Well, you know, I'm thinking... I I am thinking in the sense that, you know, a, a previous relationship I had, I was waking up at like 5.36 every morning and going to my ex's house. And we would work out together for like a good hour before the day started. And those days, I tended to have a much better attitude about life the rest of the day doing that. So it seems like it might be worth it. Um, I also know that that's one of those things that it was easier to do with somebody else there because the level of guilt if you didn't do it was high enough that you did it you didn't have an excuse even if you were like oh i went to sleep like four hours ago you're like so like get your black ass up and let's go it's accountability Mm -hmm. exactly Uh, well i could see if i could try and convince my current girlfriend to wake up like that but i don't don't know she gets a little cranky if you wake her up do not need a bitch to make you work out. No offense to your girlfriend, but that does not need to be the reason. That's, that's fine. That's a- 
That does not need to be the reason. You got to do it for you. And you know what's really cool, Winston, is when, you, when you're in a relationship, right? I mean, ideally, we want our partners to be these people that grow with us. We want our partners to, you know, we want to constantly be discovering our partners because we evolve. And so when you think of who you want to be with for the rest of your life, you think of this evolving, beautiful, endless growing relationship. You're always studying each other. And that's why old couples, you know, they still go on on dates with one another. Um, But what's interesting is, I don't know if you're um, concerned or have worries or anything about your current relationship, but if you want to see, if you really want to test this relationship to see if this person is meant for you, start waking up and doing that shit just because you know it's what's best for you. And see how she reacts to that shit. See if she volunteers to do it with you. Because, let's be honest, relationship goals we all want to get swole with our lovers i mean come on who doesn't want to work out i mean there's so much testosterone flowing when you're working out and you're like watching her get sweaty and you're getting sweaty and then you just start thinking about doing weird things over the weightlifting bench i mean it's it's a fun time (laughs) right but but i want you to do it for you um, I think it's adorable. It's very charming that you, the first thing you thought about was trying to convince your current girlfriend to do this with you. But that's not the right mindset, Winston. It's about you. So do you think you're capable of doing it for you? Yeah, I think I can. Uh, you know, I really got to figure out how to break this whole cycle of of because i really i am the grouchiest fucking person in the morning like fuck earthing like when i first wake up in the morning man but i you know like nothing nothing's been working right now so i might as well try something new i i love i love that um so when you do have something as you said pressing you in the morning to get up early do you um, set an alarm? How do you how do you wake up? Typically, just because I don't want to, I don't want to put it up to chance. Like even though I have a pretty good internal clock, like scarily so, where I'll set an alarm for say six, but I'll naturally wake up at like five fifty. <laughs> like, <laughs> like not just, the worst. Like, You're like, oh, I could have yeah. done more minutes. Okay, it, it so was exactly. your alarm, so to speak, is what do you use? What kind of sound do you use? Uh, I normally. Well, that's unacceptable. You're yawning. I, she, I Am told I you, like, you, you know, Am I'm I stressed you? the fuck out. I'm tired and shit. Uh, <laughs> normally, my alarm is is like some sort of song. Good, uh, good. Yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know. It's interesting that um, we wake up by, and if you really listen to the word, alarm. Alarm. I mean, if you look up the definition of alarm, who wants to wake up like that? You know? I am curi- I'm I'm going to look up the definition of alarm now, because now I'm curious. It is a sign of a threat. So you're literally waking up in a stressed mode, Right. And you're just telling yeah. me here about how you're stressed as shit. So I'm glad that you, you're you using music as a way to wake up. And for those of you listening out there, um, yeah, we should use we should use music. Um, I love those little um, alarms where the birds are chirping. Oh, that's so sweet. Waking up to the sound <laughs> of nature, you know. But we should be waking up in a less stressed environment and a and a pleasant uh, pleasant sound. Um, for when I started using music to wake up, um, it took me a while. Like I would play a whole song and then when I woke up, it was like the last verse or the last chorus played because I I just wasn't used to it. So give yourself a little bit of extra time waking up, but that's, that's good. You're using music. Um, what do you feel like 
you'll need to do to motivate yourself to actually get you to the gym or jogging around the block? Mm, you know, I feel like typically the more the more set structure that I have for my day, the more on top of stuff like that I have a tendency to be. Good. So, yeah. so the current... Hmm? No, go ahead. Continue. I was just going to say, so right now, since there, you know, there isn't anything, there isn't any set structure as to what my day has to play out as, I, the motivation seems super low. I've always been the type that procrastination makes me active. So, so are there current the, the, um, projects or pieces maybe that you're working on or um, something like that, that, you know, if you wake up early on a day where you don't got shit to do, so to speak, um, or if you get up early and you work out and you get in that right mindset where you could work on um, projects? It would probably, it would probably play out better, but yeah, no, I don't, knowing that it's not pressing, I don't, I don't move as quickly, like if at all. And then I'll look up and go, oh yeah, I was supposed to go work out, but I didn't. Um, Because right now there's, there's nothing, there's nothing on the docket that is like dire, if, if it's, I guess the easiest way to say that. So you kind of just um, rested my case, so to speak, um, already by that statement that you just said there. It's like you look at your clock and you're like, oh, I was supposed to go to the gym, but I didn't. So if you get it in first thing in the morning, you're already won half your day. You've already won the mental battle, you know, and then it's like you can conquer anything. Huh. All right. And then it's like, it's like you can go to the gym and you work out and you get your testosterone pumping. And then you go to your girlfriend's house and you're like, I have all this blood pumping through my extra extremity and I'm about to wake you up. Who knows? It may, you know, heighten that relationship a little bit. And then she'll be like, oh, what are you doing? That's- and you'll be like, oh, girl, I've been working out first thing in the morning. She's like, I want to work out with you too. And then you have like, you know, post-workout sex and it could, it could open up a whole world for you. That's a good point. She does like to have morning sex, and I normally push her off because I don't like to be woken up in the morning. So maybe that's not a bad idea. You are grumpy. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not. Most I am... women love being woken up by the D. Really? You want to hear a funny story? I don't really like to sure. share um, too many personal experiences. Um, with my, um, my clients, so to speak, but you know, we've, we've had a good friendship for a while, so I'll share the story with you. Um, there was a gentleman that I was dating, um, in the last year or so, and I was explaining to him how I love being waken up by the D and, um, he hadn't done it at all, but the day that he chose to do it was a very Interesting day. Do you know what day that was? What day was that? Halloween. That seems like a terrible day to do that. (laughs) So I had dressed up in drag prior that evening. I love dressing up as men. That's kind of my thing. And he had um, dressing up as a ghoul. Uh, okay. I believe it was a ghoul. And he had, um, you know, like a skull like painting on his face. And, you know, we took a shower when we got home. And uh, I think I still had some facial hair on. And he still had some paint on his face. And, it, you know, we had a really fun time. And we're pretty intoxicated. And we fell asleep. And um, I woke up in the middle of the night. And it was, uh, felt amazing. And uh, I look over my shoulder, and I notice there is a a ghoul on top of me. Jesus. And I was kind of taken back. And he said, you you said I could do this. You 
You said I could, you said I could do this. And um, he's right. I, I said he could do it, but I just wasn't really expecting the, the face paint. So I, I guess the reason why I'm telling you this story is um, when you do decide to wake up your girlfriend, just make sure that you look like you. Fair. I, I, I would assume that she'd probably be terrified to wake up of being fucked by a ghost. That sounds Yeah, I was I was a little pretty, terrified uh, at I was at first. It was like I was turned on and then I was terrified and then I was turned on again and it was uh, a whirlwind of emotions and it, it took me a little while to recover, but <laughs> Well, uh okay, duly noted I will not wear costumes to bed. And wake up my girlfriend with a dick. That's not. That's not a great. Not a great. Plan, it sounds like. Well, you know, Winston. None of us are perfect. Um, no, that's fair. All right. So, <laughs> my first assignment for you will be to work on a morning routine. Okay. Um, okay. I, I think you're fully capable, and, and um, by our conversation today, I feel like you are willing and you seem like you can conquer it. Um, should I pick another topic or is there something else that you, that you have on your, your mind that you want to speak about? No, go ahead pick a, pick another topic. All right. Stop. Okay. Oops. Family. Mm. How is your family life? Uh, it's interesting. Everybody's in a weird. Everybody's in a slightly different like state right now. Um, my sister started. Uh, she's a she's a screenwriter, so she got staffed on her first show um, last year. But the issue that she's having right now is the show that she's writing on, she was told that it was going to be more, there would be more like entries for stories for people of color and like social justice type storylines and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But every time she pitches them, they get shut down. So she's dealing with that. But it's hard for my mom and I to hear her a lot because her complaint is about like, this is my dream job and it's not going how I thought it would be, but she's making a shit ton of money and doing what she loves for a living. So we obviously empathize with her, but it's also kind of like, eh, I don't want to hear you rant for an hour about how your writing job sucks. Mm -hmm. uh, my mom is a little stressed out because she's in a situation where her living space is not great. Her landlord is psychotic. Like, listening in on conversations and showing up in the bill, like in her house whenever without any warning and all sorts of stuff. So she's stressed out because she realizes she needs to move. Uh, and she she's also a her lawyer. Chelsea's needs a lawyer. That sounds that that's, that's, that's pretty fucking true. She, a lawyer would be great, but I think she signed, unfortunately, uh, at least she didn't really read. A lot of this shit is like in there as like okay for the landlord to apparently just do. Mm, so I am not so sure she, about that. I would like to read over that lease. Yeah, I, I also would, but like I, I know one of the things that one of the things that I was brought in on the landlord is storing stuff in my mom's garage, and she was like, you know, I'm paying for the space, and she goes, it's in my lease that anything that's anything that's associated with the house because it's just old furniture and like accessories. Like she used to have one of those uh, fake log fireplaces. Mm -hmm. Instead of throwing it out, she stores it in my mom's garage, taking up like a, it's heavy and takes up a sizable amount of space. Uh, but it's in the least that she can store it there. So like it's little shits like that where like my mom didn't really read it, but she's having to deal with it. Mm -hmm. So then I think the other bad part is that I get so caught up in myself that instead of really being there for my mom or my sister, I'm off in my own space. So I definitely could do better by my family. Uh, but, you know, it's hard to either be dealing with someone who is 
so kind of disconnected from the rest of the world because of what she's doing now. I'm talking about my sister. It can be hard to like connect with her. But then on the flip side of things, it can be hard to connect with my mom just because it feels like every time I talk to her, it's some sort of like stressful situation. It's always a negative conversation and not a positive one. So it sounds to me like your family is using you as someone to vent to. Do you, yeah. do you find that as um, just in your life in general, in your relationships, your friends, um, maybe coworkers, do you find that people find it easy to let things out to you? Yeah, I have a, I have a tendency to be the, I mean, I've, I've positioned myself that way, but I have a tendency to be like the person who people express what's going on to. Yes, I am very familiar with that situation. I mean, isn't that your job? Like, that's that you know, that makes sense that you <laughs> be dealing with that. You're you so know? silly, Winston. Uh, I'm just speaking about my personal life in the past. Um, ah. But ah. I, I do love listening, and I do love helping people find new perspectives. But, you know, there is just, there are some times where I just want peace. And this, I think, goes back to the reason why I am challenging you to develop a morning routine. Because the reason behind the morning routine is making time for Winston and making Winston feel like a beast, building up the confidence in Winston to accomplish anything. Because nothing can stop confidence. And doing that, you're also going to need to create some boundaries with mm. your girlfriend, with your sister, with your mom. I am, however, a little bit curious if there's a little bit of animosity or jealousy towards your sister. Uh, there is a little bit, but it's not... It honestly, the only thing that it truly stems from is it's less, it's less the career stuff just because I've met with enough success that I know that it's a matter of time. It's not really a, uh, you know, I'll never get there type scenario. It's more the fact that like she moves throughout the world, uh, you know, the way someone of her tax bracket would. Mm -hmm. And so that the animosity comes because she likes she then tries to get whether it be friends or family or whatever to do things like somebody in that tax bracket when I can't keep up with that. Mm -hmm. So that does cause a rift because I'm like, like, for example, for her birthday, uh, I guess about a week or two weeks ago, uh, we ended up celebrating her birthday three different times. So she wanted to do a bar thing one night. She did a brunch the next day, and then we did the standard family dinner on her actual birthday. Um, and, like, it was just very expensive. It was very expensive to, like, celebrate her. Like, I love her, and, of course, I would celebrate her, but it's just not everybody can make moves like that, you know, and, like, Absolutely. continuously do stuff. So there's that animosity, I would say. Okay. And is there a part of you that is probably saying, well, if I was in her shoes, I would want to be complaining about this or I'd be doing this or do you have those sorts of thoughts? Well, if if I was in her shoes, I would be like, I wouldn't be a cheap nigga and I'd just pay for everybody. If you just going to celebrate three motherfucking times, I'd be like, all right, cool. We're going to brunch. I'm paying for mimosas. Like, I don't know. But... <laughs> I understand because she is technically younger that there are new things that she herself is trying to figure out. She's, she's in a different, while she has advanced in certain stages of life quicker, I would say that there are elements that haven't necessarily caught up with that, that she has to, that she's trying to sort out just cause like, I know she's dealing with her own set of relationship stuff right now. That's kind of throwing her in a, a, not a, a tailspin is the wrong word, but she's really having to do some soul searching about balancing this relationship versus her job, like and how the job is making her feel and all that kind of stuff, you know. 
So, do you ever give your sister, like, a different perspective on what you would do if you were in her shoes? Especially with the challenge that she's having about um, having those opportunities to write about racial discrimination and social justice and civil rights and all that stuff, and she's constantly being shut down. Are you, um, you know, encouraging her or giving her different perspectives? Yeah, no. no, I am in the sense that, like, the last conversation we had about it, I just I suggested to her that she, you know, continue to pitch it because she just it's a good thing to stay in the habit of fighting for the things that you want but to remember that the job won't last forever this is a stepping stone to her next job and her next job until she's the one that's in charge and whatnot so to find a way to have an outlet outside of it but to also not give up the fight because the last thing she wants to do is develop the habit of well people aren't going to pay attention to me anyway so I'll just like shut down. So I, I try and give her just the perspective of, of the bigger picture, I guess. Um, I don't think that I've taken the time to express my side of listening to any of that stuff or anybody else listening to her, but I have tried to at least give her the, like the older brotherly advice of like how to deal with her situation, if that makes sense. So, besides your sister going through her things and your mom going through her things, would you say that your relationships with your family are healthy? Yeah. I would say other than this phase right now, yeah, normally it is pretty healthy. All right. That's good. So, boundaries. Boundaries. Mm. And Mm. doing what Winston needs to do to the be the best Winston can be. Word. Word to your mother. All right, we're going to do one more topic. All right. Tell me when. Stop. Well, 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 what do we have here? We kind of talked about this already. Social life. Mm. So besides dodgeball, how is your social life? Um, you know, it's, it's okay. Uh, it's not bad. Like, I mean... There, I still have like my my guilty pleasure like kind of social thing. So like, I find myself watching The Bachelor with a group of people every Monday, drinking wine like white girls. Are so you, you know, the only that's, male in this group. I am not. I am. Are you the only black or, male in this group? Yes. Okay. I'm I'm the only black male in the group. There is uh, uh, an Iranian gentleman. And a oh, Chinese black. gentleman. Oh, he's black. I mean, they're both technically black. Okay, yeah. so so then no, then then I am not the only black male in the group. Very um, interesting. There's a group of ethnic males in this group. Not one white guy. Not one white guy. But all of the women, save my little sister, are white women, though. Okay. So it's three white women, my sister, myself. Iranian dude and Chinese dude. And so this is the highlight of your week as far as your social life as The Bachelor. Uh, that. And dodgeball. Uh, dodgeball. And then, yeah, those are the, probably the big two. Okay. So um, have you been doing anything else um, in your career that could be considered social? So I know you're doing a lot of writing right now. Um, have you been performing any stand-up or doing any improv or sketch groups or anything like that? Uh, you know, I haven't. I, I am a, in the process of signing up for the diversity program for Groundlings. So I'm in the middle of doing that right now. And Groundlings has a diversity program? You didn't know this? 
Come on, Doc. I, I mean, mean I didn't know that there was a diversity group. I mean, oh yeah, I know Groundlings that, is a very white white comedy school, which is exactly why they've been in. They've done it for a while now, but they they intentionally try and um, solve that problem as, as most corporations are known to do <laughs> that to offer up some sort of thing. But the nice thing about it is like. Uh, again, I'm not exactly flush with cash. The, the diversity program is one that allows you to pretty much do it all for free. Like if you find yourself into it, you can do the whole program without having to pay, which is pretty great. Interesting. So pretty much they're like, hey, you broke joke nigga, come get some education on how to be really funny. It's, it, it actually is like, hey, you broke joke African-American gentleman. We can't say the N-word, but we know you can. So why don't you come on down and take our classes so that someone can say nigga when we're doing this sketch? That is spot on. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, I went to UCB, so um, ah, I'm a little biased. I see. I see. <laughs> UCB has ex been accepting the Browns for a long time. Aziz and Zari went through there. That's fair. I've heard. Yeah. But I've also, the other thing I've heard about UCB is that they kind of a similar thing, where it's like, even though they have more brown faces, there's this tendency to kind of similar to to a lot of other, like, not just schools, but like shows and stuff for them to go, look, we have a Brown. We have a number of Browns, but like they don't actually, they, they almost have a tendency to whitewash the culture from those people. Yeah. It's just more to say they have them. Interesting. Is that, am I off base? I mean, you, you, no, 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 you're not off base. It just, it, it just got me into a very, um, you know, sad it's it's sad that we still have to fight for equality and recognition even in our um creative gifts you know yeah i mean well as long as we are being told that there are good people on both sides by the president <laughs> shit like that is kind of allowed to just go about however they want that, that is very true it is very true i mean i myself a woman of color a multiracial woman so to speak um i've gotten it from both sides growing up i've gotten it from my white friends saying that i'm the black girl trying to be white i've gotten it mm. from um, or no, my white friends are like, oh, you try to act so ghetto and you try to be so black. And then my white friends are like, oh, you try to act so white. And um, I notice when you're at work, you use your white girl voice. And um, I'm sorry, but my white girl voice gets me paid. <laughs> so <Yeah>, right. <laughs> at the end of the day, I am going to do what's best for me. Which is really what I've been trying to tell you to do um, this whole session is do what's best for Winston. And if Winston needs to die a little bit every morning to get his best mindset, to reach his fullest potential, then Winston, my friend, go die a little bit. I got to say, Doc, you were really fascinated with me killing myself. Yes, because we have to kill a little bit to grow. We have to hurt a little bit to move on. Hmm. That's interesting. I, I mean, considering my standpoint on zombies, I don't necessarily know how I feel about that. And I think I thought you would be I on my side zombies. here since you, got, since you got fucked by a ghost that you would, you know, like not be as gung-ho for that. But, I, you know, again... Again, I called you Doc. I met Coach. You know, you you know more about this. So I guess if what you're telling me is that I need to commit more black on black crime by killing myself every day, then I guess I will do that. Yeah, um, yeah, black on black crime definitely. And to be clear, I've been fucked by many ghosts. They all disappear. <laughs> ah. 
I see what you did there. All right. Not bad. Not bad. <laughs> Wine never leaves me, my friend. Um, I lost my train of thought. You, you got me a little bit of my, um, my sadness. It's okay. Oh, I didn't mean, I didn't no. mean to make you sad, Doc. You know, <clears throat> none of us are perfect. Uh, even even I have my trials and tribulations that I have to deal with, but it's our experiences that we go through in life that help us be better, and not only help us be better, but help the ones that we love. And Winston, you are my friend, and I love you. And the reason why I am here right now is to share my experiences with you so maybe you can learn from my experiences or my mistakes so you can become better and if there's anyone in your life that is not trying to help you be better or not trying to help you grow as an individual do they really deserve your time that's a good point. Do no. they deserve your energy? Do they deserve any space? Do they even deserve your breath? And and it may even seem extreme, but this can even extend to family. Mm. Like, if your sister is constantly complaining about her job and is never, and I'm not saying this is what she's doing, but... If she's never trying to help you grow as a writer, I mean, you guys share a similar talent, then does she deserve your time? If your mom is constantly complaining about her problems with her lease and she's not giving you those motherly instincts anymore, does she deserve a whole lot of your time? And so that's why earlier I was saying boundaries are important. Mm -hmm. And um, also being honest with your family members about how you're feeling and being a reflection and a mirror to them, just as I'm being a mirror to you now. We're growing every day. Until the day we die, we're always growing. Mm. So if you have people in your life that are not contributing to your growth, that are not watering your soil, that are not giving you light, Mm. ghost them. No, that makes sense. I mean, I would, you know, you saying all that, the truth is, is that I know that I don't, I don't always, I'm very, I'm very stubborn in the sense that I won't ask for help. So I'm sure, like you said, as far as setting boundaries, both saying when I can't deal with something, but more to the effect, if I'm more willing to open up that they might shift gears. I think the problem is is that I don't I don't say anything. I just kind of let it happen. Mm, there is a saying, and I believe it was a black man that told me this. Closed mouth, don't get fed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I also had a black man say that to me. My uh, Uncle Elroy. Elroy. I know him. Mm-hmm. He was big on the streets. You know, you know a Jewish you know, man. A Jewish man once told me, since um, you had brought up finances earlier, a Jewish man once told me, the easiest dollar earned is the one you don't spend. So be a cheap motherfucker. <laughs> he told you to be a cheap motherfucker. No, I added that. <laughs> ah. I was just ah. I was justifying being cheap because I'm cheap. That's fair. I mean, I I am cheap, but I'm not cheap. I'm a bo- I'm a I'm a bougie cheap. How is one bougie and cheap at the same time? Because I like nice things, Winston. Uh, I mean, fair, but if you not like nice things, how can you be cheap? Because nice things are expensive. It's called Ross. Ross. I thought you Ross. I prefer I prefer Marshalls since Offer you know that's up. my last name. Yeah. But. Offer up garage sales. My grandma was really into garage sales. Hmm. No. But this isn't about me. This is about you. Um, okay. You shared an interesting um, 
fact with me off off uh, screen here about mm. your experience at five years old at Blockbuster. Oh my god! Yeah, Blockbuster. <laughs> I miss that place. You uh, no. were really good at Sonic the Hedgehog. Yeah. And yeah. Sonic the Hedgehog was one of my favorite favorite games. Crash Bandicoot too. Do you remember Crash Bandicoot? Was I like do the remember Crash Bandicoot. Extension of Sonic the Hedgehog when the yeah. PlayStation came out. Oh yeah. So um, tell me about that. I want to. I want to hear a little bit about that before we go. Uh, I mean, it was one of those things that I. It actually reminds me a lot of when I was a kid. Um, that I. I remember we got robbed one time. And uh, where did you grow up? I grew up in Dallas. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So we we my parents had kind of figured out as we pulled into the house that we had gotten robbed, and I blew past both both my parents, not knowing if someone was still in the house or whatever. Like I could have been like snatch shot, whatever the fuck. But I ran straight up to my room to make sure they didn't steal my Nintendo. Like that was me in video games, even from like the age of like three. <laughs> That, like, a three-year-old boy running up in the house probably got shot in the face if, like, the person was still there stealing jewels and shit. They took they took my mom's jewels. They stole, I want to say, like, my dad's the TV in their in their bedroom. Uh, like, a bunch of random shit. But I didn't give a fuck. I was a child. I was like, that's my thing. And so, like, video games clearly had, like, an effect on me early. So, like, at five, six, like, I was stomping on fucking 18 year olds because you know they sucked i was just better than them i don't don't know like it was it was the shit and like you got you could literally do anything you could run at the speed of sound or fucking have little voodoo faces floating about your head and shit so like that was just a jam growing up for sure that's amazing i I, first i want to ask you a question then we're going to go back to that that tattoo on your arm does that represent your gamer lifestyle the hearts this one yeah yeah uh sort of so this is a um see if i can't try and angle it at the camera so it is from the legend of zelda but the idea is that uh every time i complete a major life goal i feel another i feel another one of the hearts in wow so the first... that i love that winston i yeah. love that yeah so, so just like in Zelda, every time you beat a dungeon or you solve a puzzle, you get another, you get more life. It's so the tell same me thing. what those so, three hearts represent. So those first three actually represent my mom, my sister, and me. Because mm-hmm. that's really, uh, my, my, my parents got divorced when I was about 10. And even though like my dad was like in my life, like it, it was really my mom, my sister, and I. So that's, that's what, uh, that's what that represents. So, uh, yeah. I mean, I will probably be filling in one very soon. Um, I've got a, <clears throat> uh, I have a show coming out, uh, an episode of a of a Disney Channel show coming out, and it's also time for me to like kind of join the union. So it's like a collective of a bunch of things will be the the fourth heart, just like pushing forward career wise. So that's awesome. I I love that so much. Um, so what I wanted to get back to was, um, you being five and dominating these 16 and 18 year olds in video games. How did that feel? You know, I barely remember it. I was so young. I remember what the room looked like for sure. Um, I just remember going in and just playing my game um, and people just being kind of enamored and that feeling was like, it was very, uh, like, it made me very full uh, because, you know, exactly that. No one's expecting a five-year-old to do that kind of, to do anything like that. So I feel like I've always had a tendency to any, anything about extraordinary kids growing up was always a big deal for me. So like I was, a, you know, even though I love Batman, like I had a greater affinity for like Robin and like, uh, even though, you know, they were girls, like the power of girls was like a big deal too. Like they're kindergartners out here, like beating up monsters and shit like that. Like I've always, 
had an affinity for people that were doing things that they weren't supposed to be doing. Um, just because it's like, oh, you, you know, you're a kid, you can't do that. Oh, you're black, you can't do that. Oh, you're whatever, whatever. Like that, stories like that have always inspired me a lot more. Um, and I've been drawn to that for sure. So I think that it was the perfect segue back to what we were talking about. And that is just owning your shit. You were a five year old owning your thing you knew your game and you went in there and you owned it and just getting back to getting into a morning routine and own your shit Marshall you know your game you have fucking Zelda tatted on your arm you know your game get in there own it and run it and I think you already know that your time is coming, but I think your time will come sooner if you own it. And we're going to start mm. with the morning routine. All right. So all that right. is my assignment for you. Um, when all does right. your Disney morning, movie come out? Uh, the Nickelodeon movie came out on the 21st and then the Disney Channel show. Uh, I don't know yet. I you haven't, yet. I haven't been Okay. On that, no. So your the Pixel High Private Eye is is airing now. Yes, it aired on on an MLK Day. Dang, Rafael Zayn. Mm -hmm. Exactly. We started Black started Black History Month two weeks early, essentially. Definitely. Okay. So when your Disney movie comes out, is it a pretty significant role? Uh, the Disney show, yeah, it's it's pretty it's pretty big. Awesome. So, Winston, what I want to do is this is so exciting because I feel like all of my clients and comedians that have been joining me so far have so many exciting projects that are coming and which <clears throat> gives me the opportunity to follow up with you guys after these projects air. So I know you're still waiting on the date for your Disney movie. But as soon as you get the date, call me. Let me know the air date. That way we can tell our audience so they can check it out and support you. But then I also okay. want to do another session with you after um, that comes out. And I expect a full report on your morning routine and what you've been doing and um, how you're feeling. Um, and... Okay. No, it's not super important, but you know, if your girlfriend jumped on board and um, how it's affected the rest in the other areas of your life, does that sound okay? okay. Yeah, sounds good. All right. Is there anything else you want to talk about before we go? Uh, nothing that I can think about. I feel like we covered a lot. I mean, there's a lot to there's a lot to work with and and to focus on. Um, how are you feeling going forward? Good. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling, um, a little restless cause I'm already ready to start implementing some of this stuff. So like, I'm already kind of trying to think so what I would excited. do first thing. You're kind of excited. Oh, but yeah. Good. Yeah. There's, there's, there's a nice little push there. Good. Yeah. That's what I'm here How are you for. doing? How are you doing, folks? I am doing fantastic. Thank you for asking. A lot of people don't ask. No, no. I'm, I'm always very curious. I, that, that's a part of the reason why I'm in, in the, the art of storytelling in the first place. I'm very curious how people's minds work. Like, in another world, I could have been you, Doc. Coach. It's, it's okay. <laughs> you can call me Doc. It's all right. kind of like it. <laughs> it's going to your head, isn't it? <laughs> you know me well, Winston. <laughs> I just don't want to get in trouble, you know. It's just I have this little online degree. I'm not technically a doctor. Um, so the only way that I can go about helping people is by taking the life coach role because there isn't it's not really a regulated thing. I don't want to get too much into technicalities, but 
No, it's all good. I, I, I have it. If it makes you feel any better, if anybody ever questions it on a legal standpoint, I never said, you know, Dr. Lexus or anything like that. I just said doc and Bugs Money says that shit all the time. And not everybody he's talking to is a doctor. So there you go. That is a very valid point. That is a very valid point. Well, Winston, I <laughs> am so glad to have um, reconnected with you today. And I'm very excited yeah. for everything that you have going on with you. Um, own your shit, my friend. Own your shit. Mm. Okay? Own oh, my shit. And Hell I yeah. will talk to you. I know you don't have your date yet, but let's say a month. I'll give you a month okay. to get your shit together. All right. What, 30 days to make it happen, right? 30 days. Make it happen. Cap'n. Cap- <laughs> Captain. Captain. <laughs> oh, man. You've been code switching too much, Doc, for sure. Yes. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, yeah, I guess I will talk to you later. We'll talk to you soon. You have a great day. Thank you for listening to Life Coaching Comedians. Get in touch with Winston A. Marshall on our website at Life coachingcomedians.com Be sure to check out his new movie on Nickelodeon Pixel High Private Eye Don't forget to come back next week where I'll be diving in deep with another comedian because on Thursdays we do therapy Therapy Thursdays Until next time <laughs> <laughs>